having a conversation. You and I having a conversation, you're not gonna cut me off, I'm not gonna cut you off. In 30 years, I've done nothing but collect information, knowledge, and your secrets. So if you and a man was in a corner doing something you wasn't supposed to do. Kim, I didn't, I, I, I didn't, I didn't know it was gonna, I didn't know it was gonna cause this kind of ripple. Um, I didn't think it was gonna. Recently, Shannon Sharp's podcast, Club Shay Shay, has been blowing up like crazy ever since that interview with Cat Williams. He knows why liars lie. And that's why I had to come on the program. Cedric did the same thing. Cedric told you when you asked him, did you steal Cat Williams' joke? Yeah. He said, it don't line up. How it Even though Shannon already had some media experience, nothing could have prepared him for how successful his podcast got in 2024. And next. <laughs> 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 Once I I establish this as a place of truth? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And that's because this interview has spilled a ton of secrets about some of the industry's biggest names like Diddy, Oprah, and Tyler Perry. All lies will be exposed, that's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong But now it seems like they are really going after by canceling his show, all because they were exposed there by Kat. I'm glad it did. Um, I understand what comes along with that lie. But if you if you remember. Well, Shannon Sharp has had everyone in a chokehold since he dropped his interview with Kat at the start of the year. The same Steve that went to go watch Mark Curry do his whole sitcom and then stole everything Mark Curry had. It's been pure chaos ever since that interview, and we've seen a darker side of the industry that we rarely get to see. Steve got a sitcom where he the principal, and he wear a suit, and he... And then he gets this high top fade, making all black men think he got the best lineup in the business. So with all the juicy secrets he spilled, it's no surprise that some powerful people want the podcast shut down before their hidden secrets are exposed more. Lies will be exposed, that's all. And, 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 and anyone who takes that the wrong way know why they take it the wrong way. But now, watching all this drama unfold, Cat can't sit silently anymore. He's speaking out about those who are ganging up to cancel the Club Shay Shay podcast. How dare you? How? Let me look on the advertisements and see, do I see your name or face, sir? Whoever you may. So is he feeling guilty? Because after all, this whole mess started with him. And that's before I knew who you were. Now that I know who you are, I'm just ashamed because you took something personal that couldn't have been personal. I didn't meet you. But knowing that Kat knows all the secrets of this industry, what is he going to do with that information? And will it frighten the elites? No for an answer. It's ridiculous. You don't even play in our league. But will it harm Shannon more? Because they are elites and they can do anything possible. So it seems like a very tangled situation, but don't worry and tighten up with your seats as you're going to find all your answers. Why did Kat come to his podcast? Why did Shannon face the backlash? Did Kat come there deliberately? And why now Kat is siding with him? This ride is wild, so hold on tight for the answers. See, Shannon had been trying to get Kat on the podcast for like a year before it actually happened. He lucked out one day when he randomly bumped into Kat's new manager, who hooked him up. Just a week later, Kat was spilling all the industry tea on Club Shay Shay. You see what I'm saying? Kim, I've been trying to line Kat up for a year. Mm. I tried to line him up for a year. People don't know this, but Cat doesn't like to fly. I'm getting- According to Shannon, he didn't think the episode would go that viral at first. His most viewed episode on YouTube was the Steve Harvey one, with about 8 million views. But after filming with Cat Williams, Shannon's producer told him to brace himself because they were about to hit big. Shannon thought even if it did better than the Steve Harvey episode, maybe around 10 million views tops, but he was way off. Right now, Cat Williams' episode on Club Shay has nearly 72 million views on YouTube. According to Shannon, that totally changed the podcast's path. After that, Shannon started getting calls from potential sponsors, more people wanted to be on the podcast, and Club Shay basically became the go-to place if you wanted to share your story. People heard about it, but when Kat when, when, when came on and did what he did, now you had no choice. You know what's crazy? Cat Williams predicted that this was exactly what would happen after his episode aired. Be able to get nobody back. I ain't gonna be able to get no more comedians. They all coming. No, they ain't. Are you kidding? Nah. 
Hey, I I'm promise you. I done got all the I, rest of them. I done, I done got the ones. I, oh, but it gets even darker. While Shannon was enjoying the success of Club Shay Shay, he started noticing that some people in the industry weren't happy about it. They were trying to sabotage the podcast. And that's not all. Some celebrities offended by Shannon's success were trying to label him and Club Shay as messy, claiming he was stirring up drama in the comedy world because of the Cat Williams interview. To be fair, it's not surprising that some of these guys took out their frustrations on Shannon. Cat Williams held nothing back during his interview. He dragged almost every famous comedian through the mud and exposed many industry lies. For example, he called out Cedric the Entertainer, labeling him a sellout and a joke thief who's been stealing jokes since 1998. He then called Cedric out for being a fraud because he didn't write his own jokes, instead stealing jokes or depending on other people to write them. He characterized Cedric, Harvey, and Smiley as a gang, stating, For 30 years, they're a group. These aren't three random guys. All of these dudes are co-entwined, and they share secrets, and this is the age of truth. Williams accused Cedric, the entertainer, of stealing a joke from his comedy set in the late 90s, a joke he also performed on the BET program Comic View. In describing the situation, Williams stated, This is not just a random joke. This is my very best joke, and it's my last joke, and it's my closing joke. In 1998, I'm doing this joke. It's on Comic View. Cedric comes to the comedy store. He watches me in the audience. He comes backstage. He tells me what a great job I did and how much he loves the joke. Two years later, he's doing that as his last joke on the original Kings of Comedy, and he's doing it verbatim. Initially, Williams had given Cedric a pass for using the joke, but his stance changed when Cedric denied taking from Williams' material. Williams remarked, he thought that I was just a no-name comedian and that he could take this joke and nobody would know. Cedric the Entertainer responded to Williams in the comments section of an Instagram post featuring a clip from the Club Shay Shay podcast, dismissing Williams' allegation as revisionist history. Regardless of whatever Cat's opinion, my career can't be reduced to one joke Cat Williams claims as his, Cedric wrote Wednesday. I've been in over 40 movies. My specials and brand speak volumes for I Am. The people I have put on including Cat in the Hat at the Gibson Amphitheater. Then he went after D.L. Hewley and Ricky Smiley, accusing them of faking it and claiming they weren't funny at all. According to Kat, they only got famous by selling their souls and cozying up to industry gatekeepers. But Kat wasn't finished. He then put Kevin Hart on blast, calling him not only unfunny and untalented, but also a sellout and industry gatekeeper. He even debunked Kevin's story about growing up on the East Coast, arguing that he couldn't have had his career start there only to gain more recognition in LA. Documentary with Chris Rock, where he shows you that his whole upbringing in comedy was on the East Coast. Yeah, it was. So how simultaneously? Then Kat questioned Kevin's rise in the industry, suggesting that Kevin came out of nowhere and quickly landed gigs and TV roles that took other comedians much longer to achieve. Kat claimed Kevin was an industry plant, insinuating he had insider help. He also accused Kevin of becoming a gatekeeper, leaving the door open for other industry plants like Tiffany Haddish. 15 years in Hollywood, no one in Hollywood has a memory of going to a sold out Kevin Hart show. There being a line for him ever getting a standing ovation at any well, comedy he club. He, he straight up called Kat a clown who belonged in a circus. Ouch, that's got a sting. But hey, can we really blame Kevin? After all, Kat didn't hold back either, accusing Kevin of being a fraud who swipes jokes left and right. According to Kat, Kevin's whole persona is a facade. He didn't mince words, claiming that Kevin likes to front like he's this mega successful superstar, when according to Kat, it's all smoke and mirrors. Kat didn't hold back, alleging that Kevin's success is more about illusion than reality. Kat really wasn't holding back. It's not surprising he had so much to say about Kevin, because their beef goes way back. In a previous interview, Kat called out Kevin for wearing a dress on screen. According to Kat, the idea of straight black men wearing dresses in movies can be traced back to industry gatekeepers who, in his view, want to emasculate black men. Over the span of several years, Hollywood has faced widespread criticism for its contribution to perpetuating various stereotypes, particularly those that significantly influence the public's perception of black individuals among a substantial audience. 
This period has sparked a debate highlighting the contention that the limited opportunities available within the entertainment industry have compelled black artists to accept stereotypical roles as a necessary means of sustaining their careers and livelihoods. Although the entertainment industry hasn't fully attained racial equality, contemporary performers do possess a degree of agency over their choices. What proves intriguing in the realm of these modern figures is their apparent openness to undertake cross-dressing roles, with Kevin Hart's name standing out notably in this context. Uh, Pope Covengine is lifting her arms into her signature muscle man pose. It basically all started when Kevin Hart appeared in a TV show in a womanly attire. Everybody started criticizing Kevin for being someone whose actions didn't support his words. Before the show, Kevin showed up in an interview and clearly said that he would never do unprofessional activities for Hollywood as other people did in the past. I'm gonna look stupid. <laughs> At the end of the day, you gotta know that you're a brand. But right after this, Kevin appeared on a TV show irrespective of protecting his brand and dignity. Why this thing bothered Dave Chappelle is because he is a man of dignity and has always spoken for the black people in the industry about how they are treated like garbage by Hollywood elites. Uh, Pope Covengine is lifting her arms into her signature muscle man pose. Kevin doing these absurd things bothered Chappelle, and he spilled tea on every single detail of who tricked Kevin to appear like this on the TV screens. Dave claimed that Kevin Hart is being trapped and manipulated by some very powerful people. No animosity there, but there's an awareness of where the void is. So now I take that, I make sure I apply it to my One fan expressed himself in these words, I don't think I'm ever going to be able to separate the image of Oprah without seeing the utter destruction of Maui. Rock ruined himself too. Another fan came up with these words, what good are sheets, pillows, and shampoo if you have nowhere to sleep or bathe? And if your kid or spouse or other family member was taken or burned to ashes, you are not going to be able to do normal activities like sleeping. Compassion is the least of what Oprah might try to summon in that cold, dead heart of hers. Not taking the kids that remain. Oprah is guilty F, the rocks handler. I'm gonna look stupid. <laughs> At the end of the day, you gotta know that you're a brand. It is indeed heart-wrenching that we are opposed to witnessing further instances of black men in dresses. This phenomenon seems to have reached its limit, and our society already grapples with numerous factors that can undermine the perception of black men's masculinity. We believe there's no need to contribute to these forces any further. Right now, I'm just talking about my family right now. I want to just talk about all the stuff I've been going through. Right. You know, I'm married, I got kids. He also talked about Tiffany Haddish. According to Williams, Haddish's rise to fame may not have unfolded as naturally as she has portrayed it to the public. Sir. <laughs> how, how, many, how many is that total? Nine. So you've done nine yeah. filmed comedy stand-up specials. With, without ever getting financed or having a deal with... The seasoned comedian holds the perspective that Haddish might have expedited her ascent within the entertainment industry. If you've ever questioned the authenticity of Haddish's persona, this revelation is not one to overlook. While stories of celebrities leading double lives have surfaced repeatedly, Haddish's journey to the pinnacle appears to be a unique case. Cat Williams left no detail unexplored in his disclosure. You wrote Girls Trip Goofball. Right. Or do you think that was already a script and they handed it to her? It, it's up to you, whatever you want to believe. I. During a recent appearance on V103's Frank and Wanda in the Morning Show, Williams didn't hold back as he shared his thoughts on several fellow comedians, including Lil Rel Howery, Jared Carmichael, Kevin Hart, and Hannibal Buress. However, it was Tiffany Haddish, the breakout star of Girls Trip, who found herself at the center of most of the criticism. I'm the introduction to Tiffany Haddish in the movie. Cat Williams, who recently won an Emmy for his guest role on Atlanta, made an effort to cast doubt on Tiffany Haddish's achievements. He implied that Haddish may not be the author of her own comedic material and questioned whether she has truly established herself as a genuine comedian. He said, she's been doing comedy since she was 16. You can't tell me your favorite Tiffany Haddish joke. Why? Because she ain't done a tour yet. She ain't done a special. She has not proven the ability to tell jokes back to back for an hour to nobody. Indeed, Cat, known for his fearless approach, disclosed that he was privy to the true story of Bernie Mac and did not hesitate to share the industry's supposedly closely guarded secrets surrounding this matter. I've always been aware of who was funnier than me. I've just also been aware of who wasn't. So now I know the real Bernie Mac stories and I know that the people that made money off Bernie Mac didn't like him. They hated it.
guts. Cat's revelation about his former idol may come as a surprise to some, but the next revelation is even more shocking. He claimed that Steve Harvey, everyone's favorite, has allegedly sold his soul to Hollywood. I think Steve Harvey some stand-up ass mo no girl who owned TV One, he used to kiss her. It's undeniable that Cat Williams is widely regarded as one of the funniest comics of his generation, known for his unfiltered humor and energetic performances in blockbuster stand-up specials. However, despite his talent and ranking among Hollywood's comedy greats, Williams hasn't received the same level of mainstream exposure as some of his contemporaries. One of his supporters said, Unlike Kevin Hart, he hasn't taken on leading roles in blockbuster movies, and he doesn't host a show like Steve Harvey. Being hopeless, he once even said, I'm just going to go ahead and announce my retirement from stand-up. I'm kinda done. I've already discussed it with my kids. I wasn't really gonna do it on a Seattle street. I was going to Los Angeles and do it in the offices of ICM or Live Nation. For some time, there was speculation that Williams had been blacklisted from the industry, which led to questions about why he hadn't achieved the same level of success as figures like Steve Harvey. It's worth noting that Williams and Harvey haven't been on good terms for over a decade, and there seems to be a significant reason behind their strained relationship. Never sold him out saying I was better than this one or that one. I just come in here on my own strength. And so tonight at the joke, I'm gonna do what I've been doing for 20 years. To trace the origins of their feud, we need to go back to December 2008, when Cat Williams called out Steve Harvey before a Christmas season show. This incident marked the beginning of their conflict, which has persisted for over a decade. Cat Williams and Steve Harvey have certainly had their share of disagreements with other comedians, and this instance was no exception. Even one of his fans wrote, Cat is solid at battle comedy. Steve is household, but household doesn't usually mean funny. Household means you're big and funny enough for them to take a bet on you. You won't venture too far off the plantation with your act, and your stature makes you hard to argue against even if you are wrong. Cat is like an Italian sports car. His humor is fast and maneuverable. He's like Ali, he hits and moves. Given a choice, I'd rather fight with Steve more than Cat. Another one added, Cat and Steve are both powerhouse comics of the modern era. That being said, I have never wholeheartedly invested all my confidence in Hollywood celebrities. People are people, and at some point, we'll exhibit our imperfections. I take them all with a grain of salt so that my disappointment's minimal. Well, it all started when Cat Williams publicly challenged Steve Harvey, asserting that he could dethrone Harvey as the king of comedy during an upcoming New Year's Eve show where they were both headlining. I was on the Steve Harvey show, and Steve Harvey, who was going to call in at 5.45 and get the straight. Reportedly, Jamie Foxx was also involved in this conflict. Foxx, who was working as a radio host at the time, played a clip of Cat Williams dissing Steve Harvey, which likely escalated the feud between the two comedians. I want to apologize for what's going to happen, Williams said of the joint comedy gig, but the second that you get on stage, I need you to understand that that's your final time as the king of comedy. Water seeks its own level. You can't stop it, playboy. It is what it is. So I hope you're ready. I hope you got a team of writers. You gonna need about six or seven of them. In response to the clip, Steve Harvey called into the radio show and expressed his bewilderment regarding the entire situation. You know, I've always been on tour with, with, with some real monsters, man. I toured yeah. with the Kings. You know, I've been on stage with Sid, D.L., and Bernie. However, on the big night when the event arrived, Cat Williams came out swinging, delivering punches aimed at Steve Harvey's comedy reputation, as well as poking fun at his clothes and hair. Addressing the crowd, Cat Williams likely had some sharp and humorous remarks to make about Harvey during his performance. He said, Please give it up for Steve Harvey. He's one of the best we've ever had, Williams told the crowd. But he don't want no parts of this in no shape or form. I don't know why he came out here with all this money y'all spent on these expletive tickets and talked about a lady in the audience for 15 minutes, but won't talk about me the way I getting ready to talk about his expletive made expletive. You see, Cat Williams didn't have fame and fortune handed to him on a silver platter. He had to build his comedic empire from the ground up, starting in Avondale, Cincinnati. He honed his craft by performing stand-up comedy in various venues across the country, from the lively streets of Oklahoma to the vibrant stages of Oakland. 
fearlessly, Kat delivered his routines, perfecting his unique style along the way through hard work and dedication. Shifting our focus to Steve Harvey, he is widely recognized as a devoted family man who prioritizes his loved ones. However, Cat Williams reportedly claims that Harvey is merely a fraud, concealing his true self behind a carefully constructed facade for years. According to Cat, opinions about Steve's comedic abilities vary drastically depending on who you ask, adding to the complexity of their relationship and the perceptions of Harvey's public image. You have been the king of comedy as long as we've had one. Matter of fact, the whole phrase, king of comedy, can be attributed to Indeed, Cat Williams has gained a reputation not only for his comedic talents, but also as a known whistleblower in Hollywood. He has been vocal about various issues and controversies within the entertainment industry, shedding light on matters that often go unspoken or unnoticed. A nigga doing drugs in the ATM, at least excuse himself, go to the bathroom or something. According to Cat Williams, Steve Harvey's reputation isn't as positive as it may seem to some. Depending on who you talk to, Harvey is either hailed as one of the funniest people on the planet or seen as a celebrity with a less than stellar reputation. Williams has alleged that Harvey has some skeletons in his closet, including rumors that he mistreats his staff. There have been persistent rumors that the famous comedian and talk show host doesn't treat his staff well. Additionally, following his talk show's relocation to Los Angeles, Harvey reportedly sent a controversial memo to his new staff, making demands typically associated with tour writers. These allegations have added to the tension between the two comedians. And I could not find a way to walk from the stage to my dressing room, to sit in my makeup chair, to walk from my dressing room to the stage. In the leaked memo, Steve further wrote, my security team will stop everyone from standing at my door who have the intent to see or speak to me. I want all the ambushing to stop now. That includes TV staff. You must schedule an appointment. I have been taken advantage of by my lenient policy in the past. This ends now, no more. Do not approach me while I'm in the makeup chair unless I ask to speak with you directly. Either knock or use the doorbell. Steve Harvey defended himself by claiming that the memo was an attempt to secure more free time during his day. He explained that the memo was sent to address what he viewed as a too lenient open door policy that had been in place during his show's run in Chicago. Harvey reiterated this defense a few days later while discussing the leaked letter with Entertainment Tonight. Look, man, I'm in my makeup chair, they walk in the room. I'm having lunch, they walk in, they don't knock, he continued. I'm in the hallway, I'm getting ambushed by people with friends that come to the show and having me sign this and do this. I just said, wait a minute. And in hindsight, I probably should have handled it a little bit differently. Cat Williams seems to have legitimate reasons for his grievances against Steve Harvey. In November 2015, the author of Think Like a Man faced a lawsuit for purportedly backing out of plans to lease a private jet. This happened after more than $400,000 worth of renovations had been initiated, allegedly at Harvey's request. These requests reportedly included custom carpet, a reconfiguration of the interior cabin from 16 seats to 14 seats, custom seat design, and new upper and lower cabin sidewalls as reported by TMZ. For me, I'm a 60-year-old man and I could not find a way to walk from the stage to my dressing room. Moreover, Cat also took his turn on Will and Chris Brown's slap scene. Reportedly, he claimed that the widely publicized Oscar Shocker slap incident was allegedly staged and that the entire world was deceived. Cat's credibility in the production business adds weight to his opinion for many people. So all these revelations have led to some hardships for Shannon and now reportedly they all are ganging up against him. That's it for today. See you in the next video. Until then, goodbye.